Now let's look at IIS's Application Request Routing, or ARR. ARR is an extension that you add into IIS. You can get it from IIS.net, or you can use the web platform installer to automatically download all the required pieces. So here I'm going to pull up web platform installer. I'm going to select application, or I'm going to type in application requests and search on that. And we'll see we get application request routing. If I add that guy and I say install it, you see the dependent pieces it has. I've already installed ARR on a box I have here called demo-iis-arr, which is going to be my um, ARR um, routing server. If I come down here, after we install ARR, you see we get this new node called server farm. So here's where I'm going to create my new farm. So I'm going to right click and say create server farm and ask me for a name for the farm. Now I can call this whatever I want, but since the URL for this ARR version of my website is arr.mysite.com, I'm going to call it that. Go ahead and say next. And then it's going to ask me which servers are a member of this farm. And that's again demo iis01 and demo iis02. Say finish. It asks, do it, I want it to create the URL rewrite rules that are required? I'm going to say yes. And now we have my new farm. I open up a web browser and I navigate to arr.mysite.com. You'll see we get the same website we've been dealing with this whole time. It's just now it's being routed through ARR. So let's look at some of the options we have in ARR. First, we have caching. So here we see that anything that goes through ARR is going to be cached in memory for 60 seconds. And we've also enabled disk cache. So it can cache data for 60 seconds. So if two people ask for the same resource within 60 seconds, it doesn't have to go back to that web tier to get it that second time. You can see there's some various um, configuration we can do here. We see here we can do health tests. We're going to look at this a little bit later, but this is every on a certain schedule, go and check a certain URL and see if it returns a healthy response. Here we have load balance. So this is how do we determine how to route the request? The default is least current request, or which is probably the most um, logical um, choice for you. Um, you probably want to route your request to the one that have the fewest number of requests. For the demo purposes, to make it a little um, easier to see it going back and forth, since we only have, you know, this is a demo site with only one user on it, we're going to change it to weighted round robin, which means go back and forth. I'm going to apply that. I'm going to say yes. And let's keep going and looking, and then we'll, we'll dig into some of, uh, we'll demonstrate how ARR works with the load balancing there. We're coming here to monitoring and management. So we can see we have our two servers. They're both available and they're both currently determined as healthy. We see any disk cache statistics going on. So this gives us some real time data on what's going on with, with our farm. Proxy allows us to configure some things about how the, um, the packets are forwarded. So we can add the X forwarded for um, information, which can be handy if we want to see who the actual um, client IP address was and some other various things can be set here. In routing rules, we can do some more advanced stuff. It's where we can enable or disable SSL offloading. And in server affinity, this is where we could set if we want sticky sessions or not. So if I want my requests, my users to go back to the same server they got the first time around, I can set client affinity and it will um, put a cookie into their session to help it determine um, where which web server it should go back to on its second request. So now I have my weighted round robin load balancing algorithm set. Let's go back to my web browser. And here we are on error.mysite.com. And every time I refresh, we see that it goes back and forth between demo iiso one and demo iiso two. Okay. Now let's disable one of the web servers and let's see how error responds to that. So I'm going to come in here to demo iiso one. Now in the application pool, I'm going to stop it. So now it's in a stop state. If we go to HTTP demo iso one we see we're again going to get this 503 error. Back here on ARR, we'll see that we go between the 503 on 01 and a healthy state on 02. So let's configure a status check to determine, um, so that the, the ARR will determine if the web server is healthy before it routes traffic to it. So let's go back to ARR. And we're going to figure our health test. 
Now I've written a status page that it, the load balancer can find at uh, the URL slash status dot ASPX. So let's navigate to that page. And so you can see what its results are. So let's, since 01 is down, let's go to 02 slash status dot ASPX. And you can see in a healthy state, it returns this bracketed success information. Let's look at the code behind on this. So what we have is on page load, it creates a SQL connection and then it queries on this nodes table where the name equals the machine name that the code is running on. If we come over here to SQL Management Studio, we see we have this simple table with names and statuses. Now what your status page actually does is entirely up to you. You may have web services you depend on, you want to check and, and confirm that you're able to connect to those. But you want to do something that just determines, is, is my web server in a healthy state? Whatever makes sense for you. I like to do these little tables so I can easily pull servers out as necessary. Let's set that back to true for now. And as we go through the code, we see we just simply query for, is, my, is this web server node in a, in a running state in my table? If so, return success. Otherwise, return node does not exist in table or node is, not, is disabled in table depending on the results you get. And then if anything goes wrong, just spit that error message back out. So let's go back to ARR. We see we've got status.aspx set as the URL it's going to check. I'm going to change it to check every five seconds. Now there's a trade-off. There is a performance impact to these requests that will happen every five seconds. Presumably though, your status page is fairly lightweight, so that's not going to have any effect on any real effect on performance. Now I'm going to five seconds to timeout. Acceptable status codes are anywhere between 200 and 399. Basically, I don't want any 400s or 500s. And let's verify the URL test, and we see that demo-iso1 fails as we would expect, and demo-iso2 passes as we would expect. So let's apply that rule. If we come back to ARR, now as we refresh, we see we don't get routed to demo-iso1. What's happened is, if we come back here to monitoring and management, we see that demo-iso1 is now considered unhealthy because it's not passing that health test we've set for it. So it no longer um, sends requests to demo-iso1. Let's go back to our table and let's set demo-iso2 to false. Let's pull it out of the web farm. Now let's go back to arr.mysite.com and let's refresh it and we see that that page still comes up. If we go to our monitoring and management page, we see that demo-is2 is still in a healthy state. So if we go to our health test and we verify our URL test, we see it's still passing. So let's go to demo-iso2 slash status and we see that it's not getting the success, it's getting this note is disabled in table, but we didn't tell our health test to check our response to make sure it gets back the response we want. So I'm going to add that we are expecting success there. I'm going to apply that. Come back here. We, we see um, we're not getting that success on the status page. So we go back to arr.mysite.com and we get this 502 saying there's no one I can route requests to. If we come to our monitoring and management, we see that they're both in an unhealthy state now. If we come back to our SQL table, we set this guy back to true. Give it a few seconds and we'll see it's back to a healthy state. Refresh the page and there we go.